Welcome back to another video, one which has been weeks in the making. In my quest to build my ultimate XP gaming machine, I managed to get hold of a bunch of graphics cards to benchmark their performance in Windows XP. For those not in the know, a graphics card benchmark runs a series of tests for you to determine the strengths and weaknesses of your graphics card so you know how it might perform in games. They generally have a counter on screen to show the amount of rendered frames being generated, and generally involve fast moving vehicles, various effects like fog or explosions, and scantily clad female game characters. So for the past few weeks I've been generating benchmarking results on the following graphics cards. GTX 950 This was an odd one, I found it on eBay for only £61.45 and with barely any information on its description. After some internet PCB layout comparisons, it turned out to be a rebadged, colourful GTX 950 2GB iCafe Twin card. It's been rebranded as Jusha, and if you've never heard of them I'm not surprised, they make medical monitoring equipment and supply these cards to drive the screen output. GTX 960 The last card from Nvidia with official Windows XP support. More on that in a moment. This 2GB EVGA GeForce GTX 960 SSC Gaming ACX 2.0 cost me £97.50 last year at the height of the GPU drought, and until I thought to do a 900 series shootout, it was my XP machine graphics card. GTX 970 This is my 4GB EVGA GeForce GTX 970 SC Gaming ACX 2.0. It was a buy it now option on eBay at £81.95 and not only has it been repasted by the seller, it's also had one of its memory modules replaced due to the previous one causing artefacts. It came with a 3 month warranty, so I felt safe enough buying it, especially as they showed pictures of it in use after the operation. The 970 is not officially supported in the last Nvidia drivers, but as it's of the same generation as the 960, a few tweaks can be made to the drivers to include it. GTX 980 My 4GB Asus GeForce GTX 980 Strix card set me back £439.98! But that's because when I bought it, it was brand new back in 2015. It's still going strong now, and performs wonderfully. GTX 980 Ti this 6GB MSI GTX 980 Ti Gaming card cost me £136.50 on eBay, and it works perfectly using the hacked NVIDIA drivers. Unsurprisingly, it's really fast, and I expect it to be at the top of my results. HD7970 Lastly, I included a Sapphire branded 3GB Radeon HD7970 VaporX GHz edition to have an ATI card to compare against the Nvidia competition. I was quite lucky on the pricing and this one only cost me £58.65. I had considerable trouble with this GPU, as whenever I turned off the PC I had a hell of a time getting anything on screen the next time I turned it on. I'd have to fully remove it and discharge all power from the PC power supply, then refit it and hope it worked. Eventually, I sorted it out by flashing the BIOS with a newer version, and it's been fine ever since. The testing setup I'm using is an MSI H81 MP33 motherboard using 4GB of Kingston HyperX Blue DDR3 running at 1600MHz in dual channel mode. For the processor, I'm using the fastest Socket 1150 CPU made, a completely over the top quad core 8 thread 4790K running at 4GHz with a 4.4GHz boost which only cost me £66.45, so that eliminates the CPU as a bottleneck for these tests. The case I'm using is the gamer's go to of the late 2000s, an Antec 900, and Windows XP is running the show from a 128GB SSD. I'll be comparing all of these cards against each other in Windows XP using the following benchmarks 3D Mark 99 Max, 3D Mark 2000, 3D Mark 2001 SE, 3D Mark 03, 3D Mark 05, 3D Mark 06, Aquamark 3, Furmark, Gunmetal 2, The Lost Planet 2 benchmark, something I found called Drones Mark. And then finally, 9 runs on the Crisis third party benchmarking tool. Most of these have been run 3 times and then averaged to get a result, 
and the 3D Mark benchmarks have been run three times apiece at both default settings and full 1080p with all the options set to the maximum. So in total, that's 12 benchmarks with 42 tests per card on 6 cards. That's 252 benchmarks. Well, it's actually probably closer to double that, as halfway through I changed memory and found some newer system drivers, so I had to start all over again, and sometimes the results made no sense, so needed redoing. Anyway, enough waffle, let's see how they all perform in Windows XP, and which of them will be the star of my next video, where I check out what will arguably be the ultimate Windows XP machine. First up is the 24-year-old 3 d Mark 99 Max test. This is a DirectX 6 test, and all of the NVIDIA cards give ridiculously high numbers showing how vastly overpowered they are for games that would have been developed using this programming interface. Even with settings at maximum, there's barely any difference. The ATI card trails in last place. Next is 3 d Mark 2000, where the 950 and 960 are nearly identical. The 970 and 980 pull ahead once the settings are cranked up to show how much better they are with all the extras added, and no shocks here, the 980 Ti comes first. Again, the 7970 trails in the rear despite the ridiculous amount of power being used. The lowest spec NVIDIA card gives better results with everything turned on than the 7970 does at normal settings. In 3 d Mark 2001 SE, we see a similar trend of the 950 and 960 being about the same. The 980 Ti goes to the top of the ranking, and the 970 and 980 sit staggered in between. Again, a disappointing result from the ATI card. I seem to remember a lot of online chat 20 years or so ago about the drivers being terrible, and these results lend a lot of weight to that talk. In Aquamark, there seems to be a performance ceiling which all the NVIDIA cards hit with normal settings. The 950 and 960 feel the pain more when the settings are raised, but with a minimum of 295 frames per second, would you notice? Of course not. Interestingly, the 980 Ti does better at the higher settings than it does at normal. The ATI card finally puts in a decent effort, but is still behind the 950 in terms of performance. On to 2003, and we have 3D Mark 3. Again, the 950 and 960 are very similar in performance, then there's a direct line in performance increase from the 970 through the 980 and up into the 980 Ti. The surprise here is that the 7970 is finally performing. It sits firmly in the gap between the 960 and 970, getting almost 970 score figures. In 2004's 3D Mark 5, the 7970 drops back down again and balances its scores off against the 950, which is shocking when you think that the ATI card is consuming about three times the power. King of the Hill is still the 980 Ti, and the regular 980 is a close second. 3D Mark 6 gives the ATI card a bit more to play with at the higher settings, and places its overall performance right between the 960 and 970. The 970 and 980 are pretty close to each other, but again this is kind of expected behaviour from looking at previous benchmarks. The 980 Ti edges out to first place, dropping very little in performance between normal and maxed settings. The Lost Planet 2 benchmark shows the strength of the 970 and 980, leaving the other cards far behind, apart from the 980 Ti, which leaps ahead massively with its newer architecture and larger texture memory pool. The ATI card is still in third place, but not by much. The more modern the test, the more it seems to give similar or better results than the 950 and 960. Not surprising, as it was released in 2012 and it has that extra smidge of memory, so I'd expect it to do better in more recent benchmarks. Meanwhile, going back to 2002, we're now looking at an odd one called Drones Mark. This test positively flies through at ridiculous amounts of FPS, as all of these cards are massively overpowered for it. The benchmark is actually over in about 5 seconds. The 7970 slips back to the bottom again for minimum and average FPS, but with a minimum count of 1411 frames, it's hard to tell until you see the results. For some inexplicable reason, the 980 Ti only comes top for its maximum FPS score. The 950 and 960 are very consistent between minimum and maximum frames, and overall perform far better than their bigger siblings. The Gunmetal 2 benchmark is a bit of a mixed bag. The NVIDIA cards all perform roughly the same here, apart from the low turnout from the 950's maximum frame count. 
but the ATI card screams through it, being arguably the winner overall. It must be something to do with the Red Team GPU architecture in this particular game engine, with minimum frame count doubling that of the 980 Ti. This is one of the tests where I tested it way more than three times per card to make sure of the results. The third-party Crisis benchmark tool showed expected results. The 970 and 980 are pretty much the same as each other, much like the 950 and 960 are. The test was run with all available settings set to maximum and running nine loops of the coastal map, then recording the average scores. The 7970 takes fourth place here, helped by its strong maximum FPS performance, and it's no surprise to anyone that the 980 Ti wins out for raw power. Oddly, the 950 and 960 show the best minimum frame performance, same as in Dronesmark. Finally, we have the benchmark with the strangest outcome. I ran this one over and over again because of how odd the results are, and no matter what I did, the result was always the same. In Fermark, the HD7970 performs three times as well as the GTX 980, and twice that of the 980 Ti. I can only assume that the ATI drivers and architecture here are insanely optimised for this particular workload. It probably doesn't help that I'm using Fermark 1.0.0 from August of 2007, when the latest available for Windows XP was version 1.20.2.0 at the end of 2018, a whole 11 years later. I'm sure the results would be different if I'd used that version. Ah well, we live and learn. Talking of which, what have we learned from all of this? Well, for one, that this whole exercise was quite expensive on the wallet. Bear in mind, all of this hardware is being paid for by myself. The other thing we've learned is that, unsurprisingly, the 980 Ti is the fastest graphics card available for a Windows XP build. Of the NVIDIA cards tested, it consumes the most power, but benchmarking all day with one eye on the electricity meter, I can tell you that it didn't hit it hard at all. The sensible choice would be to use either the 960 or 970. Far easier to get hold of at good prices, and the power usage is low. There is a 960 currently on Facebook Marketplace near me for only £55. Really, any of these cards is more than capable for XP gaming, with the 950 still giving over 60 frames per second in Crisis at 1080p at its maximum settings. Anything else is overkill, and just for bragging rights. So, to sum up. First place goes to the 980 Ti, which we all saw coming. Second we have the 980, third the 970, fourth the 960, and then the 950. Sorry, but the 7970 comes in last in sixth place, despite its random occasional good performance. If we were looking at power usage versus performance, it would still be very much in last place. I think I'll hold on to it, though, if only to play those excellent Ruby graphics demos. My next video will be my unrivaled Windows XP gaming PC video, where I beat the pants off all those other ultimate XP PC videos on YouTube. It'll take a while to get it ready, but keep an eye open. Until next time, bye bye.